All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, just a quick reminder, if you could uh, mute yourself so we don't have any uh, background noise um, while Jason and I are just presenting a few things. So we'll get started today. Um, so we saw a couple accidents and incidents um, this month or this past month, one involving a ladder or actually two involving a ladder and then one involving an impact drill, which Jason will go through. Um, so for the first incident, the employee was coming off a six foot ladder. Um, they stepped into a rotted hole cover, causing their ankle to twist. And upon falling, the screwdriver that they had in the hand hit the ground, bounced up, striking them in the mouth and chipping a tooth. So some of the lessons learned that we took away from this is we want to make sure that an, um, hole covers are present and they are ensure they're in good condition. So what you want to do is take a look at your surroundings when setting up your ladder for work. If there's an unsafe working condition, be sure to notify your foreman. That would be you guys. So I want to pass this along um, to all the sub foremen and then the crews so that they know what's what we're seeing as safety professionals and what we're seeing on the uh, job sites. So if there is any unsafe conditions, we need to make sure that we communicate this to the GC so we can get it fixed and have them replace the unsafe hole covers. Like we saw with this, the employee stepped in a fairly rotten hole cover. You know, one thing led to another. They trip, they fall, they twist their ankle, the screwdriver bounces up. So we need to make sure that we're looking at our surroundings and doing the right thing. The next incident that we saw was an employee was working off an eight foot ladder. Um, they were pulling um, wire at about four feet in height. They lost their footing while pulling the wire and fell to the ground, landing on their knee, elbow, and their backside. So what we learned from this is that we need to ensure you have good footing when you're pulling wire from a ladder or anything like that. There's also an opportunity to discuss with you guys um, if there's a potential to conduct the work uh, from, you know, another means like a lift or if there's a safer way that we can complete the work. This is all discussions that we need to have with our crews and make sure that we can come up with a good plan to get to keep everybody safe. You know, we, this could 100 percent been prevented. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So a couple of things with the ladder. We want to ensure that we're setting up the ladder in the correct manner. That's making sure it's fully opened, making sure it's in good condition. So we need to inspect it before we use the ladder. It is inspected before it gets shipped out to site, but it's always good to take another look at it before using it. Um, you know, it could have got bounced around and transport to the job site. It's just important to do those things. And then on Turner job sites, they require the ladder tag, which you have to inspect the ladder, make sure it's in good condition, place the ladder or the ladder tag on the ladder and go from there. Um, so then additionally, you wanna check your surroundings, like I said before, that's for any hazard that could cause an additional incident or accident to happen when getting on and off the ladder or while working on the ladder. So these are all just things to consider, all things that Jason and I have seen. So it's just important that we take that extra step and go forward with these things. So I'm going to pass this along to Jason, um, and he has a few things that he wants to uh, discuss. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Um, while we're on the topic of ladders, uh, we did have one more incident involving a ladder. Somewhat, um, we had a gentleman put his uh, impact drill down on one of the rungs of a ladder um, when he was coming down, um, doing something at ground level. Um, the impact drill fell and the bit went right into his hand. Um, he was very, very close to hitting bones, hitting tenants, possibly never being able to use that hand again if if he did hit that. So <clears throat> I know there's not really good places to put a drill on a ladder. So try to take them down with you when you're not using it. Because um, something as simple as that could have put somebody out of work for a long time. <clears throat> All right, enough on ladder. So um, instant reports, we've been getting people still sending in Google. Um, I'm sure nobody's, nobody's not heard that we've gone to Smartsheet. So... Um, if you don't have that link, again, reach out to me, Mike, Document Control, Sean. <clears throat> we can send you the correct Smartsheet link for um, incident reports. Um, every, anyone that's filled one out recently as well, there's a new section at the end um, for lessons learned and corrective actions. 
you can leave it blank if you can't think of anything at the time. It is definitely more important to just send that in so we can get the paperwork rolling and then, then we'll discuss what we can do differently after that. Um, but it's good to just get your brain thinking, um, how can we prevent this next time? How could we have prevented it before? <clears throat> and put something in there. Um, it would always be great, especially people that are on Turner jobs. You will know that if there's an incident, it turns into a seven step meeting um, and they like us to come prepared with how we could have prevented it or um, fix it next time. Uh, sorry, I'm just scrolling through my notes here. I got a lot to blabber about. Um, oh, um, so mitigating hazards. <clears throat> Been seeing a trend a lot. Um, people having hazards and, and, and wanting to correct them and do the right thing. Um, we need to try to not resort directly to PPE as our first instinct. Um, we should, and I know that's the easiest one. It's normally the go-to, but um, we got to look at things like eliminating hazards if we can, um, substituting it some way, engineering controls, moving things, you know, run a pipe somewhere else if you can. I know that's easier said than done, um, but like Corey Woodward and the crew down at Elevate Bio um, had a very good example of that. They were working in a shaft. They needed staging built. Um, they were going to need fall protection and lifelines, the whole nine. Instead, hey, why don't we just run the pipe over in the corner where we're protected by walls and just put barricades up and not have to use lifelines and all that. And they engineered it out and it worked out perfectly. Um, so it's something to think about. I know it's a lot easier said than done. And, and then you come into money and time and coming up with things like that. But that's what we're here for. We can help you out with that. <clears throat> Last thing. I have, um, it's COVID, very much still a thing. Um, might not be as popular in some jobs as it is on others, but it is still a thing. Um, we still are doing the five days um, out and that's five days from whether you were sick or got the test. Um, and day one starts on the day after, you know, day one isn't the day you tested, day one is after. So you return on the sixth day from then. Um, Turner jobs, I know are a little different. You got to take a negative test on day five. Um, and if that's still positive, then you have to come back on the seventh day. Um, it is what it is. It's still very much so out there. So um, that's, you know, if, if those cases come up, same thing as always, let me and Mike know so we can let the proper channels know and um, get everything taken care of. I believe, well, let me look at my notes again. Yeah, no, that's definitely all I had. Um, thank you guys for joining. Um, have a safe holiday weekend you know, don't play with fireworks if you do call me it seems mm -hmm. fun um it's really all i got sean mike if you guys have anything else uh i'm just gonna wrap something up real quick so uh just to go off of that mitigating hazards that jason was talking about if you do have a question on site please reach out to us we'll come out we'll take a look at the areas that need to be worked in um figure out if there's another way that we can uh potentially you know use some other engineering substitution or elimination um, and we'll go from there rather than try to just use PPE we'll work with you and we'll try to find the most effective um, cost effective way as well and uh, we'll work with you on that um, Sean um, I, I didn't know if you wanted to say something yeah I just want to touch base real quick on the the incidents you know and, and sometimes you view the incidents as a kind of obvious and silly you know uh, but that's your perspective as a foreman. You know, you've experienced, you've been through this stuff. A lot of the people you have working for are apprentices and they just make poor decisions. Just gonna try to be there for them. Um, you know, the, the incident with the, the hole, that was, a, that was an apprentice, you know, um, just making a, a, a bad choice of where to set that ladder up, you know, not being aware of their surroundings. Uh, and, and sometimes you just need somebody to point those things out for them. We had another incident and I'm sure Mike brought that up, uh, a couple a couple of weeks ago there with, with someone hurt themselves with a with a knife again an apprentice you know just you know if, if i'm sure if, if a foreman was walking by and saw that kid doing that you would just grab them and say hey hold on a second you know uh so just be be uh be conscious that there's a lot of younger people that are working with us it's easy to to not not realize how how much they know about these things so just uh stop when you have a chance and just if you see something uh say something. That's all I can like. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming on today, and uh, we'll reconvene next month. Have a good 4th of July, and uh, be safe. Thank you.